deduction techniques and uh, one of them is locally linear embedding or LLE. So the idea is to uh, is that the, the nonlinear manifold looks like linear patch locally. So you want to unfold, for example, the Swiss roll and uh, without uh, changing the geometry, I mean, without changing the uh, inner product, which is assigned to the tangent space. Uh, so you don't want to change the geometry. And uh, so the first step is just selecting neighbors. Selecting neighbors. The second step is to reconstruct with linear weights. And uh, so you want to minimize such a such an objective xi minus j from 1 to k wijxj squared and in the third step you want to map it to embedded coordinates you know the in their transformed space so you have another optimization problem and you want to minimize this as well yi minus t from 1 to uh, j from 1 to t wij yj squared so in the second step that we want to reconstruct with linear rates we can find wi in this optimization and then we fix this w and then solve uh, for for y so y is unknown you want to find it but w is fixed because in the previous step it is uh, find i mean uh, the the optimal value for wij is known in the second step so for example you can write so this is the to identify the k nearest neighbor of the graph so xi just um, locally you can write it as xi1 plus xi2 plus omega i chi xi k and um, so w is unknown and just uh, so let's uh, just do this minimization problem we want to minimize some of absolute values of j is equal to j from 1 to k w i j x nu i j squared and this is uh, the index of the j's neighbor of x i and uh, you know this optimization problem has a very trivial and uh, solution and it is zero so it's not interesting so in order to make it more interesting we have a constraint so this optimization problem is subject to sum of the weights is equal to one and now it, is, it does not have a trivial solution and we can find it so it is enough to know this term it is enough to understand the structure of this term and minimizing that so you can write it as so so this term let's just writing it again this term is the i's term and uh, we need to define some variables in order to to deal with that x nu i2 x nu i k 
This is D by K matrix. Also, you need to define this uh, vector W I K. This is K by one vector. And also you need to define this vector all one it is K Y one vector. So now you can write so the objective uh, is is this x i minus nu i omega i squared, and uh, to simplify more, we can consider by uh, constructing the matrix of uh, of the form x i x i. This is d by k, and uh, this is equal to x i e transpose. So your claim is that xi vector is now xi vector e transpose wi. So we can now rewrite the objective function like this. Because I said xi, xi d by k is equal to xi e transpose. And now we can write wi minus wi squared is equal to xi e transpose minus omega i. We just factor. And then, uh, you know, this is squared. So we can write as a inner product of two vectors. The first vector is omega i transpose x i e transpose minus nu i. And the second one is x i e transpose minus nu i omega i. And since this one is known and it is called G, it's a k by k matrix, and we call it the gram matrix. It's a gram matrix. And uh, now the first objective function that we wanted to minimize is very simplified. And it's just minimization of omega i transpose g omega i is subject to e transpose omega i is equal to. So we have just uh, re, uh, written, we have just written the objective and uh, the constraint in with some new variables and uh, like any other optimization problem you create the lagrangian and it is equal to your objective function which is this uh, and uh, you have a lagrangian multiplier lambda and your constraint is e transpose w i minus one so just take derivative and set it is equal to zero. So 2g omega i minus lambda e is equal to zero. And then this means that 2g omega i is equal to lambda e. And if, if lambda is known, you can simply write it as 1 over 2. Now you can do the inverse of g and lambda e. But uh, what if what if you don't have, uh, you, I mean, uh, what if g is not invertible? What if what if this g is not invertible? So we use a trick. If g is not invertible, we just add a very small number this is a scalar and now do uh, the in uh, the inverse of this matrix can handle the problem and now we fix w and go to step three step three is as i said is minimization of this j from 1 to n, w i j y j squared. 
But now w is known because it is solved in the previous step. So by defining y, again, we need some variables to simplify the problem. And uh, i is also is 1. And it is n by n matrix. So i call i is that it's zero, but the i's column is one. And uh, similarly, w is an n by n matrix. And w column i is that it's zero except uh, some weights, w i till uh, w k, and then the rest of them is just zero. So these are weights these are weights of k nearest neighbor of xi. And now the problem is simplified. And uh, we are ready to write it like this. y i colon i minus y w i squared. And uh, you know, you can just write it like this one and you factor it let's do it step by step i minus w squared and you know the this is squared so it is a dot product of uh, of this with itself and uh, we can write it as minimize the dot product is i minus w transpose y transpose and itself which is i i minus w and you know because this one is a scalar so trace of a scalar is no problem we can we can write trace as well and uh, just to remind you that the inner product of a and b with Frobenius norm is trace of a transpose b. And now this problem is simplified, minimize trace of uh, y transpose m y transpose. Uh, you know, uh, if you have maximization problem of a trace, y transpose my, or even minimization of that, this is equivalent to finding a maximum eigenvector of m, so if it is a maximization problem, this is equivalent to finding maximum eigenvector of M. And if it is a minimization problem, this is equivalent to finding minimum eigenvector of M. I mean, corresponding to the lowest uh, or highest eigenvalue. And uh, so, but uh, you know, you have constraints uh, y, tra y y transpose is equal to i and uh, uh, sum of y i is equal to, so we pick this constraint as well. So this uh, optimization problem is very, uh, I mean, has a obvious solution. And M always has eigenvalue equal to zero. I mean, eigen, uh, eigenvector corresponding to this eigenvalue is just uh, one, one, one. So ignore the eigenvector corresponding to zero eigenvalue. And then, uh, so we pick the P plus one first bottom eigenvectors. vectors. 
And this is the uh, solution to uh, locally linear embedding problem. Of course, there are other techniques for dimensionality reduction, uh, but uh, locally linear embedding has a very intuitive and uh, interesting uh, idea behind that. That's why uh, I explained locally linear embedding. And uh, in the next lectures, I will also talk about spectral clustering. I, I will talk about spectral clustering just because uh, I want to show you that it is how how Laplacian is playing an important role in machine learning. And after spectral clustering, I will come back to Laplacian eigenmap, which is just another dimensionality reduction, which is very, very important. And after that, I will talk about stochastic neighbor embedding. And, uh, and after that, I will talk about coolback Leibler divergence, because I want to use coolback Leibler divergence for discriminant analysis, and you will see how non-convex the problem becomes. And that's why uh, we prefer to use other techniques such as locality sensitive discriminant analysis. And then I will tell you that locality sensitive discriminant analysis leads to a generalized eigenvalue problem. And I will argue that uh, that generalized eigenvalue problem is computationally expensive. And that's why I will use some coordinate uh, ascent method because it's a maximization problem. And uh, using that uh, coordinate ascent techniques, I can handle the complexity of the problem.